Hi, my name is Rubedium. Today on The Learning Curve, we are looking at a unusual light fixture, one that was developed for theatre as a spotlight and has found its way into cinema as not something that does a lot of things well, but something that does a very specific set of challenges better than any other light out there. This is the Leco light. The Leco is a theatrical light that has found its way into film because it does things no other light can do. Traditionally, these are a tungsten light source available in either 500 or 750 watts. But you can also get Leco attachments to HMIs like the Joe Leco, or you can even get um, Leco attachments to LEDs like the aperture attachment for the uh, Lightstorm 120D. The Leco is essentially a very strong light source with a lens that focuses it to a very small diameter. In addition, you can blade the light, meaning that instead of a barn door cutting the light in front of the lens, you are able to blade it behind the lens with a very high degree of precision and shapeability. In this video, we're gonna look at the original 750 watt Leco light that has a tungsten bulb in the back and has a 19 degree lens. Your Leco essentially has three parts. It has the bulb, which you place through the back of the fixture. It has the blades that shape the light. And finally, it has the lens, which you can focus to a larger or smaller spot. Leco's are able to give a much tighter throw than a Fresnel lens or any open face par. And this is why they originally developed for the theater. You can have a spotlight operator uh, 50 or 75 feet away from the stage in the rafters, focusing a tight beam of light down on the performer. This isn't something we typically want to do in film because it looks, well, theatrical, but the tight beam of the Leco comes in really handy in some other circumstances. Probably the way the Leco is most used is to do a bounce hair light. If you want to get a light behind someone, but there's no room to put a stand there, to put a um, fixture there, to run cables there, more than often, you can at least get a piece of bounce board or even tin foil and tape it to the ceiling with painter's tape so it doesn't leave a mark. You're then able to use the Leco on the other side of the set to throw a very tight beam that then reflects off this foil or this bounce board and gives a beautiful bright hairline. Here we have the Leco down on the floor next to me. It's shooting its beam up. Uh, to a piece of bounce board held by a quacker clamp on a stand and giving this really um, quite strong uh, rim light. Here you can see the Lego to my side, um, the stand holding the bounce board. If this was a typical Fresnel or open faced light, um, the light would be spilling everywhere. It would be lighting the background. Because it's a Lego with a nice tight beam, you're able to see it hits just the part of the bounce board that I want and the return is really localized. Another thing that the Lego does really well is sun hits. These are small little areas of light in your background or in your shot that make it look like the sun's coming through a small gap in the curtains and illuminating the background behind you. As you can see, you can, by moving it around, uh, you can choose where it hits. By moving the blades around, you can choose the size and you can even add texture or a pattern to the um, sun hit. Sun hits are super helpful if you're trying to motivate uh, your key source. So this is the wrong temperature. If I switch it to more of a uh, tungsten and correct it in post, now it'll look much more like uh, if I'm illuminated uh, by this source, that the sun is also illuminating the back wall. Sun hits really can help motivate uh, your source and make your scene look less lit. A third thing that the Leco's do brilliantly is very thin lines of controlled light. This can come in handy if you want your actor or actress to look like they're peering through a curtain. Leco's can be cut down to a very small area and give really great science fiction effects as well. Just remember, with the Leco, the blades affect the opposite side. So your left side blade is gonna affect the right side of the light and vice versa. Leco's are great, but they're not without their learning curve. Because the cheapest and by far most available version of the Leco is tungsten, you're gonna to have to gel that light to turn to daylight to match your other daylight fixtures or to match daylight coming through the window. You also need discs called nets to cut down the light because the tungsten isn't typically dimmable. You're gonna get the 750 or 500 watts depending on your bulb, and it's not as easily dimmable as an LED. 
Vicos are also pretty heavy as far as lights go compared to LEDs. They get hot and you need to wear gloves to handle them once they've been running for a couple of minutes. Licos can be an absolute lifesaver when you're trying to get light into the upper story of a house and you don't want to have really tall stands with heavy lights on top. Instead, you can raise up a piece of particle board or bounce board and keep the light on the ground, shoot it into the board at an angle and have that light your scene. The tungsten Licos are really available and are pretty cheap. You can get the uh, bodies themselves for a couple hundred dollars secondhand. The globes typically run between $100 and $200. It took me about a day of playing around with the light to get to know it well, um, understand its relative strengths and weaknesses before I felt confident to use it on set. But if you're familiar with tungsten lights, especially Fresnel varieties, it shouldn't take you too long to get up to speed with Legos. You should also carry spare bulbs and a pair of gloves to be able to handle and change the bulbs. They're certainly not as resilient as LEDs. Despite their limitations, Lico's are a really great tool for doing a couple of really specific jobs really well. It's worth taking the time to get up to speed on these lights and how they can be used to take your shooting to the next level. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.